since we finally have our Woofy model basically configured and set up, and we finally have everything working in terms of the mechanical systems and the internal loading, the zoning, we can finally start asking the question of, is this building able to achieve the FIAS core certification? You'll see in the screen here in our Woofy model that we're showing mostly a series of big red X's on the lower right hand portion of the Woofy dialog here, indicating that no, we're, we're not achieving our, our FIAS goals, our FIAS targets. But one thing to keep in mind and, and always remember with FIAS certification is that the targets are going to fluctuate and, and shift around depending not only on your climate, but also on your building type, the size of your building, the uh, number of dwelling units uh, of your building, etc. So the, the FIAS targets are always moving, and we need to use the FIAS online calculator to figure out what those threshold targets are for our building, and then enter those into our Woofy passive model. So we actually don't know what the targets are until we've built out the first version of the model. We've been able to capture some relevant data around total ICFA, uh, as well as total envelope area. So both of those are going to be important inputs there. So while it does look like we are missing our FIAS targets by quite a bit, uh, we uh, can't really evaluate that because we don't actually have the correct targets built into our model yet. So let's just very briefly look at how we would build those in to both our Woofy and our uh, uh, Rhino model. So the first place to, to note is where we're going to input those here in our Woofy model. So I'm in my typical Woofy model that we've been working in. And up here under localization and climate, if I was to scroll over to the right-hand side here, you'll notice that we have some annual heating demand, cooling demand, peak load uh, values being input here. But of course, these are not correct. So um, these are, are just default values, but these are, are not at all correct for our building, our climate, our specific location. So we need to input this these uh, these values here. So we need to input these values directly. Right? So we want to use user defined, and we want to input these values based on the online calculator. So where do I get these numbers from? Well, let me go to the uh, FIAS, so FIAS.org. And what we want to do is we'll go to FIAS.org and we want to use their online target calculator. And I always forget where this is because it's not it's in certifications. No. Oh, oh, it's in, um, oh, we're in FIAS.org. We go, I think we go to resources and we go down to tools. And I believe if we go down to tools and then we go to calculators and protocols, I think this is, I'm almost certain this is where we find it. Oh, here it is. VS 2021 performance criteria calculator. So in order to know what our targets are, we need to use this calculator, this calculator here to determine the targets. So I go here to open the VS 2021 criteria calculator, and then we need to input some information. So as, as I've said, the FIAS targets are going to fluctuate depending on climate zone, depending on the size of your building, the number of dwelling units, etc. So we need to input some data here. So first of all, we need to input the uh, state and the city. So the, in particular, the specific climate data that we're using. So just to remember, go back to our Rhino file for a second here. We are currently using, and we just decided to use this uh, for purposes of this example, we are currently using New York JFK as the climate data. So the climate, the source, is JFK here in this model. So what that means is that in the FIAS online calculator, go back to the FIAS online calculator, we want to use New York, and then we want to use JFK. Uh-oh, does this not work in Microsoft Edge? Uh, OK. Um, let's try that a slightly different way. Uh, let me try that again. Let's try that in a different web browser. Yes. Okay, so let's try that using a different web browser and see if that works. Uh, resources, and what, where were we? Climate, uh, calculators and protocols. Calculators and protocols. Where were we? VS 2021. Open the calculator. All right, here we go. We're back. I think, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it doesn't work in Microsoft Edge. Um, all right, so anyway, New York, and then here we go, JFK. All right, so there's our there's our, our data there, um, or there's our, our uh, 
our climate zone. And then of course we have to input the ICFA, excuse me, the envelope area, and then the ICFA, number of dwelling units, number of bedrooms. All right, well, we have one dwelling unit, so that part's easy. Number of bedrooms, we had two bedrooms, so that part was also easy, right? We remember those. Where do we get these two numbers from? So ICFA and total envelope area. Um, I am gonna go back to, let's get rid of this, because I guess that doesn't work. Uh, get rid of this. I'm gonna go back to Woofy. And the easiest place to find this information is once we're once everything's calculated and running properly, uh, come up here to uh, case number one and go to report, and you'll find the data that you want uh, right here. So enclosed volume, net volume, total envelope area four thousand three hundred forty-four, total floor area one two nine zero. So total envelope area four three four four. So we come back over here and we'll say four three four four. And then ICFA, whoops, go back up to the case, go here, floor area 1290 or 1291, let's say 1291. There we go. All right. And notice down here that our targets were sort of moving around as we adjusted those values. So here are our final targets. So 8 kb2 per square foot per year, 8.8 .8 kb2 per square foot per year for heating and then cooling. Peak heating load of 6.2 BTUs per hour or square foot per hour. Peak cooling load 3.1 BTUs per square foot per hour. And then a total FIAS core source energy limit of 4,475 kilowatt hours per person per year. So these are the targets that we actually want to use. So if we were working in Woofy, let me pull this off to the side. If we were working in Woofy, we could um, come down here to localization. We could just enter these numbers directly here. So for for instance, for he, heating, annual heating energy demand, it was, we said 8.0. And then we could type in 8.8 .8 for cooling. We could type in 6.2 BTUs per square foot per, BTUs per hour per square foot uh, for peak heating load, and then 3.1 for peak cooling load. Now we do not have any place to enter the source energy target. So to bring back the calculator, uh, the source energy target is 4475. I believe this is just a bug in the Wi-Fi software right now. I, I don't believe there is any way to change what it, what shows up as the limit on uh, the source energy target. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there is a way to set that. I think that's just a bug in the software or a lack of feature in the software. So um, we're not going to be able to set that one. That one's hard coded in, but we can set these other values. So these values can all be set. And notice what happens here is we're still seeing all red X's, but these little dark lines, you see the little dark lines here? These little dark lines are indicating the, the targets, the threshold targets, and they all sort of moved around when I set these values here. So notice this one's set at eight. So that one's set at eight. So that's our, our heating demand, et cetera. Okay, so that hopefully that makes sense. How do we do this back in Rhino? So let's go back to our Rhino model. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, here's our, our Rhino model, same Rhino uh, and Grasshopper model that we've been working in with our geometry, spaces, schedules, mechanicals, et cetera. And what we want to do is come up to our honeybee pH. So we want to come to our honeybee pH and we want to use, um, we have a special component here. Here it is, the FIAS certification configuration component. So there's a whole component dedicated to just these configuration items. And this component is going to get added to the building segment. So let me zoom in here on the building segment. You know what? We never labeled the building segment. So let me just do that before we go any further. So this is building segment. And remember, the building segment, so the vocabulary here of building segment, essentially maps to a case in woofy terms. So to go back to woofy for a second, each of these cases, and, and we can have multiple cases in the model, each case effectively maps to a single building segment in our honeybee pH world. So to go back to woofy for a second, the um, source and excuse me the certification targets are set at the case level so these are notice that these are inside of or underneath the case and so these values in our rhino scene need to be set on the building segments and notice here that we have an input for fias certification so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come up here to my honeybee ph i'm going to grab this fias certification component drop it onto the canvas and this component here kicks out a FIAS certification object, which is going to get input here into the FIAS certification. So I can go ahead and make that connection. 
and now these elements are going to flow through and get set in the building segment. But of course, right now it's all just set up at default. So this, the default, um, you know, 15 kilowatt hours per square meter per year for heating energy demand, 10 BTUs per, uh, excuse me, 10 watts per square meter for heating, peak heating load, etc. So. Th th those are all the old defaults. We want to we want to change those and update those. So let's bring back our calculator for a second. So remember what those were. So we want to input our heating demand, our cooling demand, our peak load, our peak heating load, and our peak cooling load. So we want to input these values into these four inputs right here. Notice though that these are asking for kilowatt hours per square meter, whereas we're being given here kb2 per square foot. Now this calculator does have an option for metric, but I do not think it works. Um, so I believe that's also a bug. Uh, do not use the metric version. We've had trouble with the metric version. I don't think it gives you the right answer. I think you're supposed to only use the IP version. Maybe that's been fixed by the time that you're watching this, but um, it, discussing it with some of the FIAS personnel, they suggested don't use the metric version. Um, it seems like it does. It gives erroneous values. Um, so don't use the metric calculator. You only use the IP calculator, and then we'll, we want to convert over those values. Of course, that's relatively easy to do here in our model. So for instance, if we have an annual heating energy demand of 8 kBTU per square foot per year, we can input that directly here into our heating energy demand. So we can say 8 K BTU per square foot. And we can go ahead and input that directly. And what you'll notice, if we take a look at the output here, is that we're given a little bit of a preview up at the top. It says, oh, hey, I got 8 K BTU per square foot. I'm going to convert that over to 25 kilowatt hours per square meter. So this component is going to do all of the automatic conversion, so long as you just tell it what inputs you are putting in. So that was our heating energy demand. Our cooling energy demand was 8.8 .8 kBTU per square foot per year. Bring that back, right? So 8.8, .8, that's our annual cooling energy demand. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Uh, and then this will do the conversion again. So notice here, 8.8 .8 kB2 per square foot per year. It gets converted over to 27 kilowatt hours per square meter. And then we need to put in our peak loads here. So what were our peak loads? Uh, our peak heating load was 6.2 BTUs per square foot, or BTUs per hour per square foot, more properly. Uh, so let's put that in. So we'll say 6.2 BTUs per hour per square foot. And we should be able to enter that directly there. Uh, if you get some of the nomenclature here wrong, it will probably yell at you. So for instance, if I tried to say 6.2, you know, kbtu per square foot and input that as a load it'll probably yell at you and say hey you, you can't you can't input kbtu per square foot that's an energy value i'm looking for a load uh, btus per hour a flow rate of energy uh, so right it's looking for a power value so it, it should be smart enough to notice if you give it the wrong the wrong unit type when you're putting these types of things in in any event, so we got our heating load, and lastly, let's put in our cooling load. It's our peak cooling load. Peak cooling load target of 3.1. Okay, that's pretty low. 3.1 BTUs per hour of flow rate of energy uh, per square foot. There we go. All right, excellent. So we've got all our values in. It looks like they are all converting over properly. Kilowatt hours for heating energy and cooling energy demand energy, and then watts per square meter of power for heat, peak heat load and peak cooling load. Now those values are being input into our case where they then flow through into our model. And so now if I was to write out this value uh, or this XML file yet again, go back to Woofy, open, navigate to my desktop, find the latest timestamp, open that up, and if we were to go to localization, what we should find is, there we go, there's all of our values input directly here. So all of our values are now flowing through. They're being set back in the Rhino scene. So we're able to configure this all back in the Rhino scene. So it is a bit of a cumbersome uh, process, to be sure. You have to kind of model the building, uh, harvest the data around ICFA and total envelope input it into the web calculator, and then copy-paste those values back somewhere else. But 
There's no automatic version of that. There's no automatic calculator that I'm aware of. There's no API for the web calculator, um, unfortunately. So it's a very manual process the way that it is uh, currently configured. Um, so just keep that in mind, um, you know, but, but once all the data is here in uh, our, our Rhino model, you know, we can obviously change it here at any time and it'll flow through into our, into our uh, Woofy model as well. All right, so let's leave this one here. Our model is now set up. If we go back to Wifi for a second, our model is now set up. So we have the right threshold values in. Um, and now we know that we are way over our thresholds, right? So if our heating energy demand target is 8 kV2 per square foot per year, we currently show 23.8. Uh, if our cooling energy demand is limited to 8.8 .8 kV2 per square foot per year, we currently show 9.5. 9.6. So we're way over the thresholds on both heating and cooling, and of course, kilowatt hours per person per year of source energy as well. So when we come back in future videos, I think we'll turn our attention to that and see what we need to do in order to improve the overall energy performance of our building.